Hello beautiful foot nerds and anyone else who's watching this. Today is Thursday, September 16th. Chief Nick checking in here. Um, and today I wanna to share some thoughts on concepts very related to the conversation going on right now, which is the co-creation of where the foot nerd program is going to evolve to. And I think one thing to say is a lot of people you know, I've said this many times, it's been reiterated and repeated that the Footnote program uh, is an experiment. Not was an experiment, it is an experiment. And it's, ex it's an experiment that has no end, although it's an experiment that will be looked at um, as, having been, as having gone through phases. Right, and so now we are not uh, ending this experiment. We are simply ushering in the new chapter and the new uh, version of this experiment where um, this, you know, this program is gonna evolve into something bigger, into something more applicable that can benefit more people. Uh, we're the unique special ones that you know, resonated with this weird term, foot nerd, and created meaning out of it, and now adopt it as like a deeply part of our souls, um, at least most of us. And, you know, I think with change comes the perception that we're losing a part of ourselves, but that will never be lost. We will always be foot nerds, but in order to grow beyond just our current community and to really make a bigger impact, um, this thing needs to evolve and change. And the only constant is change. And as we learn and as the world changes, we need to keep pace with it. And so a couple things I want to talk about today. The first one is just the power of networks, right? Like what we've created, what the Foot Nerd program really is in the Foot Nerd community is a network of individuals who take radical responsibility for their health and want to help others do the same by acting as health hubs or nodes within their community, either for their family, for their extended community, for their friends, or even for their actual geographic community. And so there's a lot of power in networks. All the most powerful companies or all the most powerful um, inventions, really a lot of them revolve around networks. And so we've created a health network. Um, you have the broad network of TFC, which encompasses anyone who's, who has a touch point with any of our projects, people who listen to our podcast or look at our Instagram, that's the entire TFC network. Within that network, we have like this core of humans who are really doing the work to serve that network, and those are foot nerds. Uh, and whatever that name ends up being, the really the thing I wanna get at here is networks are powerful. And so one of the biggest things that we can leverage from this network we've created is the notion of distributed research. And I've talked about this from the very beginning in the Sapien Code where there is no way we can all learn everything there is to know about health and be experts and well-versed in all elements. But if, there's a, if you take all of health and divide it into 100 parts, and we take 100 people and each of them learn deeply, we should all understand at a basic level and have basic literacy of health as a whole. But if each person took one of those 100 slices, learned it deeply, and that slice is something that you really care about or you have an interest in, or is like a, a real passion of yours, and then you come back, share it on the podcast with the world and with other nerds, we're essentially distributing the load of understanding the highly complex realm of health. And so there's serious power in distributed research, and that's something that comes from this network we've created. Another thing I wanna talk about is the concept of decentralization. And this is something that you know, I've brought up as a primary thing. That is sort of the next phase, the next chapter of this experiment. Uh, one of the underlying concepts is gonna be decentralization. And so, you know, decentralization really just means there's no central authority. It doesn't mean there's no leader per se. It means there's no singular leader. And essentially what that means is without a singular person taking chief um, point on making important decisions and then having everyone else say yes that was a good decision because so and so said so um, we are each taking responsibility for doing uh, our part of the leadership so it's kind of like participatory leadership where everyone is doing a small part of leading this community so decentralized doesn't mean there's no leader it means everyone is stepping up to take an active role in where this thing goes and you know everyone who wants to say ha everyone who wants to have a say in what we're doing has a say and it's an equal say and so it's really just a form of participatory governance it's not 
it's not an, it's, it's much easier to just have central authority that takes, takes on the onus of decision making. But with something like this, I think it would do it a disservice for one person with a limited scope of understanding and information and perspectives to make decisions that affect where this big thing goes. If we all participate, it will be better. It doesn't mean we're gonna agree on everything. In fact, if we do, that's a problem. We should disagree. But we should also know that through productive disagreement, we will come to something better than any of us individually could have created and even not agreeing with certain decisions knowing that the consensus was that every the majority of us agree with it hopefully can allow you to accept that that's the best way it might not be the way that I want but most people think that's the best way so we should do it that way and I'm gonna go with that decision and run with it just like it was my own and that sort of brings us to the last one which is you know how do we make decisions in a uh, decentralized project and the other big term the other big theme that i think needs to carry forward into the next chapter of the footner program experiment is consensus decision making and this is a once again it's not an easy way of doing things but in this case there are certain cases where doing it based on consensus instead of by authority is better and i think this is definitely one of them. And we have the group of people, this special group of people um, to do this with now. And I think it's really cool. Like the experiment until now has created a group of people who can now take it, take where we are and bring us into the future together. That's sort of my rationale. Um, and you know, consensus decision-making is really where all stakeholders are working together to reach an agreement, um, to agree on a, on a course of action. And I think one of our first decisions is to um, decide what percentage agreement is gonna be required for consensus, right? Is it 50%, 60, 70? You know, I think it should be around the 75% mark because if we're 50-50 torn on something, I don't think that's a good enough decision to move forward with uh, an action. But maybe 75%, maybe more. I'd love to hear everyone's thoughts. What do you think is a valid, and obviously this is gonna depend on the amount of participants because even though we're 170 in the community, we're probably only, I'm not even sure, maybe 50 active people. And there's probably only about 15 people who are really participating in this exercise of co-creating the next version of whatever this, whatever we've created. And so, you know, I think we need to decide on, and, and that percentage is probably gonna depend on how many people are part of that core group. But a decision we need to make is what percentage is needed for consensus to be reached. And if consensus is not reached, we don't take action until we can hit that consensus percentage number. And that's really important. So we have to know what the denominator is. We need to know how many people are actually part of this core group um, and what the expectation is if you're gonna be part of that core group in terms of how involved you need to be and all that kind of stuff. These are things we need to work out, but it's gonna be worth the challenge, I promise. This is, it's really exciting. I'm, I'm more excited about the Footnote program now than I was after a year in it because now we have such a broad and dense level of talent of different perspectives and we have way better brain energy in this now than there has ever been before. So I'm super excited for what this turns out to be. And I think one thing is, one last thing to say about consensus is that there are levels of consensus, right? So if a decision is on the table, ready to be made, um, there's kind of different levels that you can agree with it, right? You can be a resounding yes, 100% I agree with that. You can be, well, I'm not a like 100% yes, but I can accept that decision. It seems like that's the best decision we have available, although I'm not like all in on it. Uh, there's not fully agreeing with the decision, but vowing not to block it uh, and to support it moving forward. And that is sometimes the harder one to swallow where, you know, if, if there's 20 of us, and we reach 75% consensus on something. So 16 out of 20 of us agree that this is the best course of action based on what we all know. Those four people might vary in terms of their level of agreement, but I think a really good uh, mentality of us working together to do this is that even if I don't agree with a decision, but the vast majority of people in this group agree with it, I'm gonna trust that maybe my perspective is not the most valid one. And I'm gonna support whatever decision this group makes knowing that our collective mind is much po more powerful than our singular mind. And so, um, yeah, it's gonna be exciting to, to experiment with what this looks like when um, everyone is an equal and there's no central authority dictating where things go. And 
you know, I'm still, I'm always gonna be involved with this. I wanna be a contributor and obviously I'm gonna, I have a perspective, you know, based on having led this group until now, I have this perspective of how to usher group energies. Um, and so, and also I just spend an exorbitant amount of time on small decisions. So that are really important, right? Spend a huge amount of time on a small number of very important decisions. That's sort of like my role at TFC or the Footner Program or any project. So I still wanna be able to contribute that to the group. It doesn't mean my ideas are more important than anyone else's, but I think being able to spend more thought time and energy and focus time on a decision um, will allow me to still contribute productive ideas that can be put into the mix and voted on. So yeah, hopefully that, um, had some cohesiveness to it, but the power of networks, distributed research, and the fact that we have this amazing network of, of individuals who really care about health and we can distribute the load of researching health and understanding it over time. Uh, decentralization being no central authority, really because each of us are taking a subsection and stepping up to be collective authorities to make decisions together. Um, and then consensus decision-making, where we have to decide on the percent um, the percentage threshold at which a consensus decision gets the green light to, to move forward and take action, and the notion that even if you don't fully agree with the decision, if the consensus level is met, we should all be able to um, support a decision knowing that that is what the group decided. So anyway, I think just that was just on my mind. Um, I'm going to be thinking about sort of everything that's happened on the first discovery, first two discovery calls and putting together a concise two-page PDF, just putting my thoughts out on, on, you know, ideas on where this thing can go, how we can do it, and uh, I'm really excited. I'm excited for permissionless contribution, for everyone to be able to contribute to this project um, without asking permission, um, and also for everyone to be able to, you know, to create a financial framework where if you put energy in, you get compensated for that energy and um, you know, to, to just improve how well we connect people from the TFC network to health guides or whatever we end up calling ourselves, that can help. And so uh, yeah, I hope you have a great rest of your day, rest of your week. Thank you for watching, I love you all, and I'll chat with you later.